Hello everyone and welcome to this third video in a series on how to install Drupal 9 on a Debian 10 based server. In the previous two videos we configured our server so that we had all of the proper dependencies that Drupal relies on. Uh, we also got the code from the Drupal website and we made sure that our Apache 2 web server is able to find all of the files and code that it needs to run Drupal 9. In this video we're going to go over how to create the database uh, which is a pretty quick and easy thing to do. The instructions that Drupal provides for us are really quite good, better than most open source systems I've had to build that just assumes you know how to build a database and um, create a user for that database. So what we're going to do is uh, kind of pick up where we left off in the second video. And we left off here on this page just to demonstrate um, Apache 2 being able to find all of the files it needs to run Drupal. We're going to go back to the instructions page. And so in the previous video we left off here at the download Drupal. Uh, what we need to do is just hit the back button. And um, we are now here at step three create the database and we're skipping the install dependencies with composer because we did it all manually um, and again I, I don't have anything against composer I've just never used it so um, I didn't bother setting things up with that so let's click on the create a database link they have a couple of sections so if you're a, a web browser based control panel so if you have so if your host allows you to access something like C panel or Plesk, um, you'd be able to kind of do things there. Uh, you can use PHP my admin to set things up. Uh, I really do. I don't have any issues with PHP my admin either. I just feel things are, are quicker and easier and just all around better using the command line. Um, and it really makes sense to, to learn that environment. Uh, so I'm going to use SQL commands. I'm just going to click on that so that we get down there quickly. And in this section here, uh, we're just going to look at these commands uh, that they have. So what they're telling us here is we need to create a new database for our site, and they give us the command to do that. And actually, in this case, what I think I'm going to do is um, put these two screens side by side so that we can copy and paste things to make life easier for us. Uh, move that down. Sorry, just adjusting things here. Um, let's go ahead and clear this. And, okay, create database from that. So, uh, we're going to follow these steps here. Uh, create a new ba database for your site. I'm just going to copy all of this, and we're going to have to edit it. Uh, let's see, paste, and um, if I, you'll notice that my cursor is at the end of the string here. Uh, what I can do is hit Control A to get to the front, and this is something that I'm going to have to run as a sudo user, so I'm just going to put that at the beginning of the line, and then if I do, um, we need a username. for this and what we need to do is put in root because that is the only root user that we have access to now so we're telling MySQL which in this case is actually MariaDB uh, for the user root ask for the password and then execute this command here the create database database name and we don't want it to be database name we want it to be I'm just going to call my Drupal database Drupal um, and then the, it gives us the character set for that database. Um, not exactly sure what the collate command does, but they provide it here, so we should probably use it. Um, and at this point, if I hit enter, that should go ahead and create that new database for us. And this is a little bit cut off. Sorry about that. And so they want us to enter the password, and I believe it's the root password. So um, whatever we set up in, I don't know, what was it, the first video, second video? I can't remember which one where we set up the MariaDB database. But whatever password you gave when we ran the MySQL secure install directive, um, that's the one you want to use here. 
And if that doesn't work, then then try the one for your system. Uh, sometimes it, because we're using sudo, sometimes it might ask you for your system user user's password. Sorry, um, but in any case, this this looks like it, it ran successfully. And then what they're telling us to do next is uh, log in and set the access database right. So we'll do that. And they give us the MySQL user username p directive. Um, and again, I, th I think you're going to have to use sudo. Um, sudo MySQL dash uh, u and then the root user and then p and then that root user's password. We can actually check to make sure that the database was created su successfully by running the um, show databases bases command. Don't forget the semicolon. Um, and you'll see here that the Drupal database does exist. And what we'll do next is um, create a user that has access to that database. And I'm just going to copy and paste this. One thing I've noticed that uh, between copying and pasting with um, websites and command lines is sometimes it will come over, these single quotes will come over as a back tick. So it'll kind of look like that, which is not what you want. Uh, so if that is the case, make sure that these are actually single quotes. And we have to edit this because we don't want our user to be called username. And I guess the, kind of the standard practice is the system name, Drupal, underscore, user, uh, and then identified by passwords, whatever password you want to put here. With these sorts of test environments and tutorials, I just use password because it's easy. That way I don't forget. Um, these systems end up being deleted anyway, so it doesn't matter. But know that if it's a production environment, password is a really, really bad password. So I'm going to create the user Drupal user at localhost, which is this system here. If your database lives on a separate server, I believe you would have to put in the um, URL for that or the IP address and then identified by password. Okay, enter. Okay, great. And at this point, uh, let's see, we need to pass the proper permissions to the user. And here they kind of list out all of the permissions that they will have. So they'll be able to select and insert and update. And if you're not familiar with MySQL, that's not a huge deal. Um, but if you're curious, you could certainly do some Google searches to learn more about those. You could also just do grant all rather than list all of these out. But I suspect if you grant all, probably giving permissions that Drupal feels um, are unnecessary. So I'm just going to use their recommended command here and copy that. I'm going to paste it here. And again, let's see, we're going to have to delete a, whoops, we're going to have to edit a few things. So these are all of the things this user will be able to do. So they'll be able to insert things into the database and delete things and create things and alter things and all that good stuff. So create temporary tables on, so on the database that we want them to have those permissions. In our case, it's not database name, it is a Drupal. And then that dot, and then an asterisk, which just means within this Drupal database, the asterisk is a wild card for every table that exists in that database. Uh, and we're assigning all of these privileges to the username. And uh, we'll need to change that to the user that we created. I think I just deleted a quote there. I did. Um, let's open that. Uh, and we called our user Drupal user, and it has to be in single quotes, and then the at sign, and then localhost in single quotes, um, identified by password. And in this case, I kept that user's password as password, so I'm just going to leave it as that. I think if you change it, it will um, create a second user called Drupal user, and you don't want that. Okay, so we will click enter. And that should be all we need to do. What we should probably do is do flush 
privileges privil oh, sorry privileges semicolon and so what that does is makes it so that what we've just done allowing all of these privileges to the Drupal user user it'll take effect now that we've done that uh, we can exit MariaDB by typing exit and then let's just quickly jump back over to the website uh, make sure we didn't miss anything um, okay I think that's it yeah so I think we've created the database successfully. Make sure you remember the database name. In our case, it's Drupal. Make sure you remember the user for that has all of the permission access permissions for that, which was Drupal underscore user. And make sure you remember the password, um, which in my case, I just left as password because this is this is a test environment. So at this point, we should be able to run our uh, web-based installer, and we'll do that in the next video. Uh, so I hope to see you there.